Thank you, Steve. And we're lucky to have you on our side. I can even begin to imagine if you were on the other side. Uh... <laughs> Good afternoon. A lot has been said today about the state of human rights in Lebanon, seen through the case of Dr. Sami Jaja. You heard about the abuse of individual rights, the biases of the Lebanese judiciary. You heard about torture, illegal arrests, and inhumane detention. This is unfortunately the reality of the condition of human rights in Lebanon today. I would like now to approach the subject from a political perspective, highlighting the detrimental effect of Dr. Jaja imprisonment on the overall political situation in Lebanon, and even in the region, and the importance of his release for the restoration of a democratic and sovereign Lebanon. Allow me first to briefly describe the background of the Lebanese problem. When analyzing the history, modern and ancient of Lebanon, particularly the history of the Lebanese conflicts and wars, one can easily note that the repeated Lebanese crises are the results of two major factors. One internal, confrontation between the two main religious cultural components of the Lebanese society, i.e. the Muslim and the Christian components, and external, the harmful foreign interventions of other states or other powers in Lebanon, usually in support of one Lebanese group against another. Specifically, and regarding the recent Lebanese war, starting in the early 70s, we witnessed on the domestic side a rebellion coming mainly from the Muslim groups, Sunni and Shiite, calling for a larger share in the government. And on the foreign side, multiple destructive intrusions from different parts of the Middle East. Syria, Iran, Libya, Iraq, the PLO, Israel, and even from as far as the former Soviet Union, pouring fighters, weapons, ammunition, and other means of destruction. One can easily deduct then that the lasting solution to the Lebanese problem resides in stopping the damaging foreign interference in Lebanon's internal affairs and eliminating the imbalance in power sharing and governance. It is amidst this turmoil that in 1986, Dr. Samir Jaja, a Lebanese physician, assumed the leadership of the Lebanese forces, the Lebanese resistance, resistance defending, defending at the time the free area of Lebanon. Jaja strongly believed in institution building and accountability. From this perspective, he began to restructure the LF by reorganizing and retraining the military units under a comprehensive rehabilitation program, which sometimes took up to two years to complete. But the reform process undertaken by Dr. Jaja was not limited to the military. He established a civilian administration for the free area of Lebanon in the absence of a state authority to provide multiple services for the population, from police and law enforcement services, to health and educational assistance, affordable public transportation, welfare support, etc. Politically, Samir Jaja believed in a solution for Lebanon based on three fundamental principles, which he outlined later in the LF party statement of principles, namely, one, the sovereignty of the Lebanese state, two, the pluralistic nature of the socio-political system, and three, the sanctity of basic human freedoms. So in 1989, when Lebanese parliamentarians met in the city of Taif, Saudi Arabia, under Arab international auspices, including the United States, to search for an end to the Lebanese war, and when they drafted a document of national entente, the so-called Taif Accord, based on the sovereignty, equal power sharing, and pluralism, and the respect of human rights and freedoms, Samir Jaja saw a window of opportunity to turn the page on the Lebanese tragedy and start a new era of stability and peace in Lebanon. In addition, the Accord set an agenda to achieve national reconciliation, including a general amnesty law to cover the period of the war and the formation of a government of national unity to incorporate all the different Lebanese factions. Samir Jaja was the first Lebanese leader to disband his militia and turn it into a political party in the hope of joining the democratic process, and as such, he had a pivotal role in ending the state of war in Lebanon. But in 1990, Syria invaded the totality of Lebanon and gained control over the country's national decision and has been intervening in all forms of Lebanese daily life, whether social, financial, political, or any other. 
Since then, Lebanon has witnessed a reversal in the process of the implementation of the Taif Accord. No withdrawal of foreign forces, no disarming of militias, no sovereignty, no amnesty, no reconciliation, basically no end to the Lebanese war, and a perpetuation of the conflict. Faced with the clear implication of the Syrian plan, Jaja resolved to resist Syria's campaign to subjugate Lebanon with all peaceful means at his disposal. He twice rejected ministerial positions offered by the pro-Syrian Lebanese government. The Alaf refused to participate in the 1992 parliamentary elections, arguing that Syria's heavy military presence in the country precluded a free and fair electoral process, a truth that rings loud today from the mouth of world leaders. In 1994, following the bombing of a church, Dr. Jaja was arrested, illegally and unfairly sentenced, and since then imprisoned in solitary confinement in the Ministry of Defense. Starting with the banning of the LF and the jailing of Samir Jaja, there has been a significant deterioration in the state of democracy and human rights in Lebanon. Leaders of the opposition have been ruthlessly persecuted and silenced through jailing, forced exile, threats, harassments, and even assassinations. Political parties, human rights organizations, gatherings, and sometimes religious services have been banned. The media is muzzled, TV stations are forcefully shut down or severely penalized when critical of Syria. Individual freedoms are constantly violated and arbitrary arrests, illegal detention, torture, and death under torture became common practice. Fortunately, starting in 2004, and thanks to the better understanding of the Lebanese situation by the United States and by Europe, in particular France, and influence by the opinions and the expressed will of the citizens of Lebanese origin, Lebanese Americans, Lebanese Europeans, a resolution was passed in the United Nations Security Council on September 2, 2004, Resolution 1559, which calls for the withdrawal of all foreign forces the disarming of all militias, the respect of the Lebanese constitution, and the rectification of the electoral process. And following the assassination of ex-premier Rafiq Hariri on February 14, 2005, an independence uprising, also called the Cedar Revolution, was started in Lebanon. Syria, the main occupier, is now being forced to withdraw from Lebanon. So there is finally hope that the foreign interference may end. But let us not forget that to build a stable Lebanese nation, it is crucial to achieve true national reconciliation and to respect the human dignity and the civil and political liberties. My friend, the long list of tragic events in Lebanon after the Taif Accord, up until the killing of Rafi Hariri, started with the persecution of the Lebanese Forces Party and the jailing of Samir Jaja. Similar to the historic turning points, that took place in Africa and in Europe with the freeing of Nelson Mandela and Lech Walesa. The liberation of Dr. Jaja could, reserve, could reverse the long process of oppressing the free people of Lebanon. And then Lebanon could truly join the community of democratic and free nations and become again a beacon of progress and prosperity in the Middle East. Thank you very much.